Hey guys, Ryan Phillips here, co-founder of LVA and the actual customer interview we've got today really isn't just a customer interview. So we're interviewing Phil Naylor, who's part of the LVA team. He's one of the alumni coaches and he's also our um, go-to guy for doing our weekly Q&A calls. Phil is in the trenches. He actually went through the LVA program and did $6,000 in his first month. He's now doing $30,000 per month. And um, it's great to have you on, Phil. And hopefully we can share some content that's going to help the beginners that are going through and uh, maybe answer some of the questions and concerns that they have. So uh, welcome on the call. Yeah, thank you. I'm pumped to be here. I, I appreciate it. Anything that I can do to help is uh, I'm all about it. So for sure. Cool. So if you could start with uh, going over your uh, story. So from you know where you were before LVA, then implementing the program for the first time, the early success that you got, and then the kind of journey to where you're at now, that would be a great place to start. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to be as, as, as quick as possible. I, I can talk sometimes, so just feel free to you know stop me whenever. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do the short version. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I've always been in the entertainment industry. Um, so out of high school, uh, so I was in a band for about 15 years. So out of high school, we got signed, we went on tour. Um, I really, from, from the very first, uh, from the very beginning, I always thought that I was put on earth to do that. That's, you know, anybody ever asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would always say rock star and they would laugh and I'd be like, no, but you know, I'm going to, I'm going I'm to be that. So from a very early age, I kind of learned that, you know, I always just had, kind of had the mindset that anything was possible and, you know, I was going to do what I was going to do and just, you know, if anybody else can just, <laughs> you know, um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I was in the band for, for forever, it seemed like, uh, but when all that ended, um, and it kind of ended abruptly, um, I was kind of left with, you know, what am I going to do now? And, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, this was got a good five or six years out of high school. So I didn't go to college after high school. Um, so I decided to go to school for audio production um, just because it just made the most sense. I wanted to stay within the industry and, and uh, you know, I was good at music and I was good at producing music and that's what I've been doing. So uh, it just made the most sense. Um, so I got a degree in audio production um, and then ended up in uh, at a company called Avid. Um, and they essentially make all the software for recording music and editing movies. They actually started in feature films. Um, but, you know, I interned there for a little bit. Uh, and then at the end of the internship, they were like, well, you know, audio is out west in California. I'm in Boston. Um, and they're like, we don't really have anything. Nobody ever leaves the company. So, um, you know, we'd love to have you, but don't wait for us. Um, I ended up, uh, you know, I ended up emailing my supervisor at the time every month for three years. Um, and I would just send him an email every month. Like, how about now? How about now? How about now? Um, and finally, you know, after three years, he was like, you know what, there's something on video. Um, do you know anything about video editing or anything like that? And I'm like, sure. You know, I used I used final cut and iMovie once or twice. And I'm like, sure, I'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, when I, I got into Avid, um, you know, doing support for them, uh, and then kind of just quickly grew up uh, within the ranks. I was at Avid for 10 years, um, but you know, I just I started to learn a ton about video and motion graphics, and um, you know, towards the end of my time there, I was I was I was head of training, so I was making uh, I was I was um, you know managing the YouTube channel. We had 60,000 subscribers, 10 million plus views. I had my own um, tutorial series on that channel. Uh, I was creating uh, all the training, both internal and external. Uh, so video training. So I was doing courses, and so it, was, it would allow me to make music and you know, kind of, you know, perform and, uh, you know, edit videos. And I started, you know, buying my own equipment and buying cameras. It was like uh, another expensive habit. Right. So, um, but yeah, I mean, through with at Avid, I mean, I worked on the Hobbit trilogies. I worked on Star Wars. I worked on Breaking Bad. I worked on, you know, some of the biggest movies in, in the history of earth, um, as a workflow development. Um, so basically I would, I would, they would tell me what cameras they had, and um, I would tell them how to get the, the footage from the cameras to the edit phase and, and all that stuff. So, so yeah, um, 
but it, you know, it got to the point where, you know, it wasn't really, you know, it was my dream job. I was working from home 95% of the time I was doing six figures. Uh, but it really, you know, it's, it, I started to think, you know, where's this actually, where's this taking me? Like, am, am I maxed out here or, you know, it, can I get to where I want to be? Um, I, I always thought that there was a little bit more for me, uh, in life. And, you know, it, it just dawned on me that the two things that I was really good at at the time was, was, was creating videos in, uh, in managing social media, uh, were the two things that were literally changing the industry and changing marketing. And, uh, and this was, this was three years, three, four years ago. Um, so it was really starting to gain in popularity and the more and more I started to learn about it, but the more I, you know, thought to myself that this is something that, you know, I want to do. And, I started, you know, telling my wife, you know, I think I'm going to start my own business. Um, and she, you know, we have three kids um, and she thought I was absolutely insane. Um, she was like, no, we're doing well. Um, <laughs> there's no way in hell you're going to start your own business. Uh, and I, you know, I, I kept, you know, uh, the more and more I thought about it, I was like, you know, I, I think I'm going to do this. Um, I had no idea uh, anything about business. I'm a creative guy. My my brain is all over the place, man. It's like, um, you know, to, to, to think about me actually running a business was like, okay, I can say it, but that doesn't really compute to me. I don't know how I'm going to make that happen. Um, and then, you know, this, this ad on Facebook <laughs> kept, you know, going, you know, I kept seeing Brandon's face over and over again in my newsfeed, um, about, you know, starting a marketing, a video marketing business. And I'm like, what like this is exactly what i want to do uh so it just made sense to kind of pick up the program at the time and i was still at abbott at the time and um so that really kind of lva propelled me to really start to make more sense of okay i can take you know what i'm really good at and i can i can I can start a business. I can, I can, I can actually really do this. Um, so what I did is I just started, you know, I, I made a goal in January of 2013. Um, and I wrote it down. Um, I still have the paper, um, it's on my wall somewhere. Um, so it's pinned up to my wall, but I wrote it down. I said, I'm going to start a business, uh, and leave Avid, um, within, the, within this year. Uh, and I laughed at that, man. I was like, there's no way, <laughs> like how many to, figure out how to start a business and, um, and, and go out on my own and leave my six figure job, um, you know, working on <laughs> the biggest movies in, in the history of earth to, to start my own business. Like it just didn't make sense, but I wrote it down and then I just started getting up, you know, three hours earlier every single day, which well, I never was a morning person, but I forced myself to get up and work out. I started meditating. I started reading self-help uh, books and things like that. And, um, six months later, man, I had left Avid, um, and I had my own business, which was, um, which was pretty crazy. So, you know, I, when I left, I was a video company. That's what I was going to do. I was going to create videos, uh, for businesses. Um, and I wanted to bring my experience in the quality that I knew and learned from Avid at the very highest level. Uh, and I wanted to, to make that affordable. Uh, for businesses, because I knew how important video was to have, um, you know, as you know, inside their marketing strategy, and I knew that you know, businesses were, start, were starting to kind of see this, um, and it was really kind of it was it was blowing up at the time. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, I, I started a video company. My like like you said, like you mentioned, the first month, uh, really the first six months. Uh, so the first month I made six, 6,000 bucks and I was like, all right, cool. Like this can happen. Like I like that. I can, I can deal with that. And, real real you know, quick as well. Is, was it yeah. the first version of LVA that you picked up? Was it yeah. LVA uh, version one? Cause I know we're on I, version three now, or was it version two you jumped in on? I think it was version one. It could have been version two though. I'm not. Was it when the main sure. thing was taught was ranking doing videos for local exactly. business and ranking them. ranking video. So it really, yeah, so it's it the made old a school. Lot. It would have been number yeah. one. Yeah. Yep. So it was all, it was very YouTube centric, uh, which made a lot of sense to me because I came, I didn't have Facebook experience. I had YouTube experience. Um, so it just, it like, it was literally when, when that, when those video, it was like a three video series that Brandon put out and I'm like, Oh my God, this is like, he like was speaking exactly to every point, like what I was good at. So it's like, it was, it was just a no-brainer to me at the time. 
Um, so yeah, like I said, you know, the first six months were, were crazy. They were, they were crazy good. Um, Abbott actually hired me, um, and still, I still work, um, and do contract work for them every once in a while, but, um, they hired me to do some video work and it was really kind of, it was a, a lot of low hanging fruit at the time. Uh, and what ended up happening was six months down the road when all that low hanging fruit had kind of died out and I didn't have a strategy. Mind you, I was a video company. I was making videos. I wasn't doing Facebook ads. I wasn't doing, there was no way for me to retain these clients. So as my low hanging fruit all started to kind of dry up, um, I was left with, Oh, like I have no strategy to get clients. Like I don't know how uh, there's, I, I have never run a business before. I've never had to go and actually, you know, get clients and, um, you know, I was, there was stuff in LVA for sure. A lot of it was door to door, uh, and that just scared the hell out of me. Uh, and I fought it and fought it and fought it forever. Um, and that was really something that held me back. Um, and so, as, so in LVA one, cause I wasn't yeah. part of LVA one, that was one of the client getting strategies was knocking door to door. Yep, it was going door to door. Old school, wow. Uh, and, and, and the way that Brandon uh, explained it was, you know, he was just telling stories about how he would walk into these businesses and his hands would be shaking because it would be so nervous. And I'm like, that's me. I'm like, that's me. I'm like, I can't do it. Like, I, I can't. Um, so, you know, what I was trying to, you know, I was trying to call people and I didn't really, I, I knew that I was really good at video. Um, what I refused to do, though, is I refused to do things for cheap. Um, I didn't want to do $500 videos. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do thousand dollar videos. Like every once in a while, um, I'll, I'll do a thousand dollar video still. Um, but it's, you know, I, I knew the type of quality. I knew the money that I was spending on the equipment. Um, and to, you know, how much it, it costs to kind of keep up to par with all the newest stuff that was coming out. And, um, you know, so I knew my value. Um, but, what I was seeing or what I was finding, it was, it was a, it was a tough sell. Um, because on one hand, you, you know, these businesses knew that they needed to go video. They knew that it was the king of media. They were seeing it work for, for their friends and they were seeing, you know, video it's, it's everything. Right. So, um, but on the other hand, they weren't, I wasn't running Facebook ads. I wasn't, you know, I was ranking, but ranking, you know, it took time. It wasn't, in, it wasn't instant gratification. So to go to a business and say, yeah, give me $1,500 or give me $2,500 for this video. They believed me that I would give them a good product, but they couldn't see why they should spend that money at that point because they weren't going to, they couldn't see, I wasn't doing a good enough job to, to show them, you know, the ROI and how they were going to get that money back or why, or maybe they were in situations where they may, they might've made a video in the past uh, and the video company just gave them a video and then they put it on the website and, you know, businesses expect that just having a video on their website, uh, it's going to work magic. It's just going to pull in people from all over the world. Um, and, and they're just going to become huge just because they have a video. And, and it became very apparent to me that I needed to figure that out. And I needed to figure out how I could present them or how I could pitch, you know, here's how we're going to make you money. Uh, because that's really what I was after. And then that my, you know, if we step back, I mean, the whole reason why I got into to running a business or doing this is yes, you know, I, I said to myself, if I had a billion dollars, what would I do in my spare time? It would be exactly what I'm doing now. Um, so yeah, I, I have the passion for it, but I love seeing people be successful. I, I, if I can, if I can show people the way, you know, I love, you know, the life that I'm living right now is, you know, yes, I have my goals and I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Um, but right now is pretty damn awesome. Like I, I'm not going to a nine to five job. I'm not answering to anybody. I make my own schedule. I kind of do my own thing. It's, it's really up to me where I go. Um, so if I could show people or if I can provide that, uh, type of life to to a business owner and make their lives easier and and, and set their goals and, and help them achieve their goals like that is something that really drives me. So um, so yeah, I mean, I just I spent a lot of time kind of crafting an offer and I I knew that I needed to get into Facebook 
Um, I started to learn a lot about Facebook. I think I, I purchased every course on the market. Like you name it, uh, you name the course, I probably have it in my in, in my um, in my thing. So, you know, but what ended up happening though is I I kind of went through an information overload uh, in a sense where I had a huge knowledge of Facebook uh, from every guru out there, uh, which all had their kind of own way of doing things. Um, so what was happening is the the Facebook ads that I w that I was trying, I was trying to apply everything that I knew into every single campaign, and it's just it's not the way that it works. Um, so I was I you know sometimes I would get you know mediocre results, or I wasn't getting the results that were that was making me confident enough to really go in and pitch these companies and, and i wasn't you know a lot of it and i think that i find this too with a lot of people that i start working with and and, and mentor and, and try to help out um is that fear uh gets in the way uh and i think it happens to most of us i mean probably this happened to you as well too ryan so it's you know that fear of you know fear of the unknown and the confidence that you know yeah i i think that i can do it but I don't want to take money from somebody and have put have them put all their faith in me and then not be able to provide um, what I'm saying. Like that's I just don't want to be in that situation. So that literally stopped me in my tracks for so so long uh, until I finally said, you know what, it, it, you know, it got to the point where I my back was against the wall and and I you know I wrote this um, you know and I and I tell the story a lot, but you know it got to the point where I had here I was, my background, you know, working on the biggest movies in history. I knew what I was great at. I had a passion for it. Everything lined up, right? But at the same time is the fears and the lack of confidence and the lack of client acquisition strategy and the lack of business knowledge and the, and I was trying to do it alone. And I didn't really, you know, it was, I didn't, I don't have friends that own businesses. I don't have a lot of people that I can go to for mentorship and, and I was really kind of starting to figure all this out on my own. And it got to the point where I literally had no money. <laughs> and it was like, how can you have, you know, the first six months or so be, you know, oh my God. You know, I remember thinking to myself the first six months, like owning a business is super easy. Like why doesn't everybody do this? Like everything was just kind of falling in my lap and you know, it was just great. And I was making tons of money and I'm like, all right, yeah, cool. Uh, you know, who needs that six figure job? And then finally here I am, it's like a right around Christmas time. Um, I have three kids, a wife, I have no money. Like literally we were spending our savings, um, no money in the bank. And, and I'm like, I remember like tears in my eyes sitting at my desk, like how can this possibly be the situation that I'm in right now? Um, because it just seemed like I was, tr I was, I was hustling, right? <laughs> I was just, you know, I was, I was doing, I, you know, I'm not afraid of work. Um, I was working my ass off. I was working sometimes 18 hour days, um, but I wasn't getting anywhere. Um, so it really got to the point where it was like, it was, I was starting to think about, you know, applying to places, going back to work. And so it really kind of got into really uh, a spot where it was, uh, it was a really low spot. Um, and then, you know, I just kept, I kept at it. And then, a, a thought came into my head of, of about, you know, I was learning about chatbots at the time and, you know, uh, it, it just, it's, something clicked. Uh, and then, you know, I tried, uh, you know, I did another low hanging fruit post on my, on my Facebook page. It was like, um, you know, just a, a curious student type thing where it was just like, Hey, I'm looking for a business to, to try this out on, do I have any takers? And then somebody, um, a spa got in contact with me, uh, and then we ran a giveaway, um, which I, you know, I mentioned in, in the alumni module. This is the the whole thing that kind of got my business started, and and still somewhat the same strategies that I use today. But um, but yeah, I mean, I, I ran this massive giveaway, uh, made the spa of uh, you know forty five hundred bucks in seven days, um, you know two hundred and something leads. Um, that were really that were turning into to business as time went on. Um, so here I was. This was my home run. Um, this was something that you know I knew that I could duplicate over and over again. Um, and I started to. Um, every time I, I tried it, it worked. And then it was to the point where okay, 
you know, I blew them away. And this is something, this is something that I tell everybody that I'm, I work with. You know, if you're, if you're just starting out, the first customers that you get, you should really do this with every customer, but especially the first customers that you get, you should over deliver, like, like go above and beyond, like blow them out of the water. Because basically what happened with me is the spa was so blown away by the service that I provided them. You know, I was there meeting with them. Uh, you know, I was, I was going over everything. I, I, you know, developed a follow-up strategy for them. And so I kind of laid everything out for them and they were just so blown away that they just started to tell all their friends and all their business owner friends. And then before long, it was like, oh God. So I went from literally zero money in the bank to 18,000 within three weeks. Uh, and then I had my first $30,000 a month. And then it was just like, uh, you know, and then I started, okay, and I wanna have $50,000 a month. Um, and I didn't quite get there yet, but I will. Um, but that's where I'm at now. It's just, you know, I've, I've developed, I have about 30 clients um, they're not all working, you know, some of them are kind of like a month to month or some, some of them are like, we'll call you when, when we need you type thing. Cause they can't, you know, handle the, um, the amount of, of, of leads that I can send them with Facebook, um, which is a real problem, believe it or not with, with Facebook, sometimes it works too well. Um, but I have a, a list of 30 clients that just from month to month, they're, you know, they're calling me. Sometimes I have to turn them down um, because I'm, you know, right now I am one person. I do have a VA that I work with every once in a while to kind of, you know, in the in the event that I do need to do uh, lead generation or client acquisition. But right now my business is just it's referrals right now, and it just it got to that point really quickly. Um, Whereas, you know, like I always tell everybody, once you hit that, you're you're literally one home run away from changing life because once you get that that home run, it gives you the confidence, it gives you the momentum, it gives you, it allows you to see that yes, this stuff works uh, and it just gives you a model that you can duplicate over and over. And, you know, I was just at the point where I was just so, you know, having money in your bank account it definitely changes things a little bit, uh, you know, gives you a little bit of a confidence boost. Um, but I was just literally, you know, put me up on a mountaintop uh, and, and let me scream um, of what I can do. And that's, you know, before long, it's like going to meetups and business meetings and going door to door like I wanted to because I wanted to tell everybody what I could do, um, which got me in trouble <laughs> a, a lot of times too because I was going in, I was like, yeah, I got this, I got this business, you know, 250 leads in seven days. And then, you know, before long, these businesses were like, well, I want 250 leads every seven days, which is, it's a little bit of, a problem you don't want to you know it's so there was there was things that you need i needed to figure out and still you know i'm i'm learning every single day but um but it's it's crazy how how life can change in a, in a flash so uh, could you bef- could you give us a timeline so when when was it lva1 when did you pick that up what year what month would you say i want to say 2013 um, it was right around April. It was like springtime. Um, and then that brought me, you know, I went through that over like April, May, June, right around that time, because from June to January of 2013, where were just unbelievable months for me. Uh, and then that January of 2014, that's when I kind of started the struggle. Um, and then that brought that whole year was just like, what am I doing? Because I mean, it's, it's it, the one thing that, you know, when you're, when you're a business owner, owner, and especially when you're alone, like I was, and, and that's my, my, my advice to any, anybody is that, yeah, you can do it alone to a certain point, but, you know, try to find people that are, are in the trenches uh, with you. That's why I think that, you know, groups like the coaching group are, are huge. Um, because you can, you know, bounce out ideas off of each other. And, and it's really, it just, when you have so much going on, especially in my situation where I, I have three kids and it's not just me, I'm not a college student, you know, that's just looking to make money. Like I have a family. Um, I have, my family got used to living a certain way when you're, you know, I was, I was making six figures. Um, I was doing well, you know, that I could have just stayed there and that could have been my my career for the rest of my life. I mean, we were living comfortably. So, um, but you know, I left all that in, and, and when you have the stresses and you have, 
you know, trying to make this stuff work and you, there's so much unknown, um, overwhelm can set in really quickly. Um, and as an, I think as an entrepreneur in general, I think we all go through moments where we're, you know, self doubt and, you know, can I really do this? And, you know, of course you have, you know, my, I grew up with in a family where, you know, my, money was the root of all evil. Uh, rich people were were bad, and you know you can't you don't want a lot of money because that would make you a bad person. So I I grew up from that. You know you go to work and you work 40, 50 hours, uh, and you work until you're sixty five, and then then you can begin to live your life after you've done the work. Um, so of course I had you know my mother was the worst. <laughs> she would come over sometimes like so when are you gonna get a real job? Uh, and it was just like, oh my God! So you you have these outside sources telling you can't, uh, and it's not going to work. And, and and of course, I mean, you can you know you can meditate all you want, and you can you know live as positive uh, as you want, but that that stuff will start to affect you, especially when things aren't going your way. Um, so it's just really it's important to just kind of keep your head down and you know put your blinders on and and just know that you know and believe in yourself and that that if you're passionate about it and if, if you're doing it for the right reasons, then it's going to work out. Um, that's all great. That. Yeah. Gr great advice. What, what, what yeah. was the year and the month, if you can remember it, when you did the 18K? So that was when it started um, right to turn around, around December of, of 14, maybe, or 15? Um, it was either 14 or 15. It was like the, you know, it was a couple years um, after LVA. Um I could be wrong. It was either 14 or 15, but, um, that December, uh, you know, like I said, I, I made that 18 K in you know, three weeks, um, from not only from the spa, but they had referred me to a couple people. So I was just, um, you know, I was making videos and, and doing Facebook advertising and, and just really trying to starting to figure out this recurring revenue thing. Um, and then it just grew from 18 to, to, to 30,000. And it just kind of never, of course, I mean, I've had, you know, I, I teach a lot. I mentor, I, I work with, I, I have about 40 students right now. So, you know, there was, there has been times where, you know, I've, I've really, and I've mentioned it to you, I've, I've really kind of had to scale back a little bit uh, because balancing, you know, teaching and, you know, uh, you know, I, doing the group and, and being a one man person and, and, you know, $30,000. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, what was that? I mean, it's, it was like five or six, um, or maybe seven recurring um, clients were, were, were was giving getting me right at thirty thousand dollars between you know and this is Facebook advertising this is uh, video work uh, so it's not all from you know just running Facebook ads these are creating videos for them on a consistent basis I do web as well so it's it's really a, a combination of different services um, but but yeah I mean it's uh, it was very quickly it was. You know, like they say, overnight success, right? Um, <laughs> after years of just crying and <laughs> sadness. Yeah, familiar story. So, fast forwarding to where you're at now, what yeah. niches do you serve? What local business niches are you in? So, spas. Um, so right one. now, I have um, real estate. I have a lawyer. Um, so it's it's there's a um, there's a bunch of of outside niches that are kind of just hanging on from when, you know, I was at a point where I was like, uh, I wanted to just help all businesses and I refused to niche down, uh, and which was a problem for me. Um, and this was something that I needed to learn, um, is I wanted to, I felt like I had a service or I, we do have a service that could help anybody. Right. So, and, and I didn't want to, I couldn't, pick a niche and I, I didn't want to. And so I have some, some people that are, are going on, you know, a year now that I've been working with them on a consistent basis on a, on a monthly basis. So, um, real estate, a lawyer, um, a construction company. Uh, I have a, a custom plaster company that creates like custom ceilings, uh, for plaster, um, uh, massage therapist, yoga. Um, and then yo, I have a couple of yoga, uh, places because what I once I got my yoga client, um, it was really I, I, I was like, oh my god, this this works really well. Um, so I kind of went on a you know I'm gonna search for every I want to you know 
market to every yoga place on, on the planet. Um, and then gyms. So uh, I've been in martial arts for years, um, and I really wanted to to get into that niche. Uh, so that's where I'm really sitting right now. So I have, God, I have nine martial arts places around the country. Um, so I have, I have personal, tra- I have a couple personal trainers in Australia um, that just like found me from Facebook groups. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's this, they're, they're not only locally, but they're, I'm kind of starting to expand around the world right now, but you know, I love gyms right now. Gyms are, are my go-to. That's where I'm really kind of focusing all the attention is, especially with, with Facebook. Um, I think gyms and martial arts, uh, they're just cool videos to make. They're fun for me. Um, and, uh, I opened my own place, uh, seven months ago. Uh, so that's another endeavor that uh, you know, it was just kind of balancing, um, you know, all the stuff going on in my life right now. So, but yeah, so, but the, you know, opening the gym was definitely, it was a great way to just like, oh, not, it's like very comfortable. Like I can just try everything. Uh, and that's really allowed me to, you know, obviously a lot of it's failed. Um, but, you know, it, that's really allowed me to, to horn my skills and figure out like something that's that's really solid, um, and I think that you can apply what I'm doing now for that for for my gym um, to anything, uh, and it really comes down to going back to marketing 101 and you know building an audience and, and setting or getting that brand awareness out because uh, we were we were unknown uh, we were in a place where you know they didn't there was no other there's not a whole lot of competition where we are um as far as the town that we're in um so and we were brand new like nobody knew who we were we were just kind of we were opening up and uh, so it was a it was a test to kind of you know start from the very ground up and and figure out what worked and uh, we've been very lucky we had a a goal of 100 students uh within the first year um it's been seven months we have 162 students right now congratulations yeah it's crazy and it's all been facebook and a little bit of youtube a little bit of google ads but majority is is all facebook and video awesome and out of the clients that you have what would you say is your main method for attracting those clients and closing those clients yeah so um going back i mean it's it it became so what i what i found uh and this was another lesson that i learned is um you know especially when you're when you're like a, a person like me that's that's taken a ton of courses um, from every guru on the planet. Um, you 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 kind of learn Facebook in a way that okay, this is what you do. This is how you get really good, great results. You run giveaways or you run uh, offers or um, conversion ads. You set up a landing page, a thank page, uh, and you do that, uh, and you just do that every month. Um, and every single time that I got into a course, my main question was okay, I get it. Like the tech, like to, to actually get results, it's, it's pretty easy when you simplify things. Um, but how am I going to do that every single month? And that was my main question and I could never get it answered. Um, and it was like, all right, so how do I, you know, if I'm working with a massage therapist, how many different offers could I possibly have, um, that I'm going to run to a relatively small audience every single month and get those crazy results it just didn't make sense to me um and what i was finding is that you know having you know you you can get great results for the first you know two three four five six months uh and then it kind of you know and you almost see it when you run an ad within that first seven days you almost see you know your ads run into a little bit of an ad fatigue um where you're 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 targeting a very small 10 mile radius uh, in most cases or a lot of cases or at least that's the way that I do it um, and there's there's a, a it's a relatively small audience when you know in in the terms of the internet um, in, in Facebook's terms so um, you know people start getting used to seeing your offers and your giveaways and they don't have as much um, as um, you know pizzazz as they once did so you know that was really something that was really kind of like how do I yeah, I can have great results for six months and then I'm back at square one. I need to find another client or, you know, how am I going to keep delivering for that, for that client? And then it was like, oh, well, let's think about marketing. 
Uh, and what what happened to brand awareness? What happened to building relationships? What happened to you know um, you know connecting and in developing uh, raging fans? Um, and that's what really I kind of got back to doing um, was you know the take the gym or, or my gym for that matter. We've run two at two offers in seven months. Um, so we have 162 signups. Uh, or members, we have a 92% retention rate. Um, and, you know, we're doing 20, you know, just the gym alone is 20, $30,000 a month um, and from two offers. Um, so what we've been doing is we've been running video ads uh, and building audiences and running content that really shows what makes us different from the other martial arts gyms. Like we, we're jujitsu, we're uh, Muay Thai, these where we're not your typical, you know, taekwondo, karate, you know, martial arts place where typically you you, you see children go to. Um, Jiu-jitsu is just, I mean, it's obviously it's popular, uh, you know, it's, it's grown in popularity, but um, it's generally looked at more as a, an adult type of self-defense um, type martial arts. So, you know, we, we really wanted to show people, you know, our atmosphere, we're very family oriented, uh, we, we care. I mean, I think, you know, this, this goes for every martial arts place, but, you know, we really, to, to give somebody a, a family friendly, you know, comfortable atmosphere, the gym is state of the art. We spent a ton of money on, on making the, it's, it's all brand new. It's brand new construction. So we wanted to kind of show, you know, people having fun in classes and really trying to just, we create video content and sometimes we'll run ads. We don't ask for anything. Uh, we just run the videos. We just want people to watch them. Um, and the engagement has been crazy. Um, and so we're, we're basically, we're building audiences. And this is really what I'm doing with, with all my customers right now. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's the thing about Facebook is, you know, people don't go to Facebook to be sold things. So you very rarely, you know, you, if you have an irresistible offer, yes, you'll get results. Um, but you want to, you know, you very, it's, it's very difficult to sell things to cold traffic, um, on Facebook, people, you know, especially local businesses, people want to buy from from brands they like, know, and trust, right? So it's just you know going back to just the very basics of marketing. Um, so we're just building audiences, putting out content, putting out valuable content, lead magnets. You know what? How can we, you know, show a business's personality? I always say a video is is the next best thing to a handshake. It allows people to really see who you are um, if you do it the right way. Now I'm not talking about let's make some TV commercials um, or, you know, something that's salesy, you know, if you make inspirational content that, you know, you're, you're really, you know, who is your customer? What is their problem? If you could solve their problem and not ask for anything in return, um, they're going to, you know, they're going to start to know you. They're going to like you. They're going to respect you for giving them content without, you know, selling them any, every, uh, you know, every chance that you got. Um, but when you do have an offer and you can remarket, to that audience that you're building, that's just, I mean, it's marketing 101, it's huge. So, um, and it allows you to, to have longevity with your customers. So you're not just, you're not running out of offers to, to run all the time. So you always have something to do month after month after month. Is it, do we create another video or, you know, do we create a, a lead magnet or um, do I help them with, with vlogging? The, you know, it's just kind of setting up their strategy. And what I like to do is ingrain myself in the business um, so that I become almost part of their business and I'm developing that relationship with them where I'm more of a friend. Um, I, I know how their business runs. I know their pain points. Um, so that if they do lose me, um, it's going to be a hit to them. So, um, that's the, that's the type of situation that I want to be in. And I still have clients that are just, like I said, month to month where it's like, oh, yeah, awesome. Thanks for helping me. We'll call you when we need you. And it's like, you don't really want to be in that situation where you have to, you know, cold call and just hustle your, your butt off every single month. Um, so it's really, I had to develop a strategy to kind of keep customers and, and keep them long term. No, I like that. It's, it's, again, you're talking about marketing 101, but entrepreneurship 101 you talked about as well, which is asking the question, how can I add value? And that's yeah. how, that's what you're doing with the businesses you're working with, which is great. Very cool. Um, what are the biggest challenges that you've faced on your path to growing your 
local consulting business? What's the biggest challenges that you face so far? Um, you know, I think I, you know, I, I like I mentioned before, I, I think just being alone. Um, you know, a, a lot of the, a big challenge for me was thinking that I could do it by myself, um, and not having a lot of support, um, and not you know. I had the LVA group, but I thought that, you know, I, I just had the mindset where, you know, I was just going to, I was going to do this and, and, you know, I, I, I didn't, and I don't like to reach out for help too, too much, which is kind of a, a fault for me um, that I'm trying to work on. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, it, it's, I think that, you know, for, for anybody that's just getting into this, I would say, you know, rely on the group. Um, you know, ask questions, be active in the community, uh, bounce ideas off of each other, um, you know, create accountability partners, you know, someone that's going to, you know, I, I'm the type of person where if, if I say that I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, but sometimes, you know, like anybody, I mean, I need a little bit of, of a push sometimes. Um, so just having, you know, when you have a, a community like the LBA group, you um, you you know reach out find people in your area maybe there's someone that's in your local area that you can kind of work with and, and kind of collaborate with and, and bounce off ideas uh, off of each other and i think that you know that was really you know there was um there was just a lot that i didn't know and you don't know what you don't know sometimes <laughs> and um so it's just you know, a, a lot of overwhelm sometimes where you're just trying to figure out, um, you know, how to make things work and believing that you can, but at the same time, when you're trying things and you're failing over and over again, which is part of the process, um, which, you know, I, I definitely, um, I embrace a, a lot. I, you know, I'm grateful for my failures, I'm more grateful for my failures rather than anything else because, you know, they just, you know, as long as you're learning lessons from them and as long as you're, you're seeing the good in everything, um, and staying positive, I think that, um, you know, but easier said than done when you're in the trenches and you have no money in your bank account and, uh, you're like, what the hell did I do? Like, was this the right decision? So, um, I just, you know, staying course and, and reaching out and, and using the community, um, is, is super important, I think. Um, because those were really my biggest struggles, where it's just kind of keeping the positivity, you know, keeping the positive mind frame, you know, having nobody to bounce off ideas or bounce ideas off of and um, not knowing a lot of business owners and things like that. So, um, so yeah, and, you know, I think to, to add to that really quickly, I think, you know, client acquisition, you know, that was my biggest problem. Uh, and that was really, you know, I think, and I talk about this in my module, in the, in the alumni module, it's super important to, especially this day and age, we, there's a lot of digital marketers out there. Um, so in case you haven't noticed, uh, everybody wants to be a digital marketer nowadays. Uh, and, you know, especially my clients, and I say this all the time, I've mentioned it in the coaching calls, is sometimes me and my clients will get together and we'll laugh and we'll look through their emails at all the people pitching them for videos and people pitching them for facebook and they're really all using the same templates and the same language and everybody's exactly the same um so you know what i would say is, is i can't stress this enough is you need to find a way to differentiate yourself um to to not only be confident in the value that you bring to the business but you need to stand out um and you know, and I'm not saying by any means that people shouldn't cold call or shouldn't cold email because I know people that are just absolutely killing it um, with it as, uh, still. But what I you know would say is if you're first starting out, if you don't have a lot of low hanging fruit, make some go out and meet people, um, you know, develop relationships. There's meetups, there's BNI meetings, there's all kinds of networking meetings going on in all over the world. Um, so to, no matter where you are, you should be able to find um, somewhere to go where other business owners hang out. And I'm not saying that, that you should go and you should hand your business card out and pitch every single one you see right off the bat. Just go and meet and say, what do you do? Um, and not talk about yourself maybe the first couple of times. Like what, you know, have them, everybody likes talking about themselves, right? So what do you do? You know, what services do you provide? Oh, that's awesome. And just form relationships because over time, uh, and if you keep going to these meetings consistently, um, they become your low hanging fruit. They know you. Uh, and then before long, 
after they're talking about themselves, they're going to say, well, what do you do? Um, and then then you can go into a little bit, oh, this is what I do. Um, maybe, maybe we should see if there's some way we can help each other. Um, and then that's really, that's how it really all got started. I mean, yeah, we, I, you know, I did the low hanging fruit post in the, in the spa and we got some referrals, but really, you know, I started to really kind of gain ground when I started going to meetings and B&I meetings and um, getting out and just meeting people. Um, because I think that people are starving for that. And, you know, people say it all the time, right? Oh, well, Facebook is is the devil. Like, nobody actually talks to anybody anymore. And, like, you, you're constantly hearing that. Um, so I think that especially in the older generation um, of business owners, if, you know, startups are one thing, maybe they're used to that. But, you know, older generation of businesses that have been in business for a while, they're starving for that handshake uh, and to, for that eye contact and to know that you're an actual human uh, and that you care about what they do and that you can help them. So I think that's huge. I, I agree. I think as well, a lot of people, probably a lot of people that are either thinking about, you know, grabbing LVA or a different course or maybe a, you know, a, a mentee or a student already, it's a lot easier and more comfortable to hide behind a computer screen. So yeah, right. by going out there and meeting people face to face, like you say, definitely differentiates yourself and for the people that are thinking maybe that's too far or that you're uncomfortable it's good to remember that you only ever grow when you step out of your comfort zone and you get uncomfortable whether it's as a marketer a business person uh, a person in general you only ever grow when you get uncomfortable yeah there's there's no growth in your comfort zone so it's I think it's great advice yeah, and that's exactly. I mean, you you hit it right on the end. That's exact. That was my next sentence. Is is really um, if you're to the point where you're really uncomfortable about something, or you're you know like me listening to Brandon saying you know every time he went into a business, his hands were shaking because he was so nervous, and I was thinking to myself like, oh hell no, like I'm not I'm not doing that. Like if you're in a situation where you're really uncomfortable at something, or it's, you're you're starting to get overwhelmed. Um, or you're really starting to, to doubt what you're doing, that's a good sign <laughs> because you're stepping out of your comfort zone and you can never, you can't grow unless you do that. Um, because if you just try to do what's comfortable, like, you know, just picking up the phone and you're, that's, that's comfortable for you, but it's not working, but you're still like, well, well I'm comfortable with this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that because I don't, I'm, I don't want to hear the word no. Well, you're going to hear the word no um, more than you hear the word yes. Uh, and you just got to be comfortable with, with that. Um, so once you start getting comfortable with, you know, yes, I'm going to I'm going to go and I'm going to meet these people. You know, they might not hire me, but I'm still going to do it because one of them is, is, is bound to, to say yes. Um, so just being comfortable with no's um, is a big thing too. Yeah, fully agree. And you, you might have answered this already because you gave such a great explanation and answer to the last question. But finally, in closing, I just wanted to know what advice would you give anyone that's starting out? So let's say a complete wet behind the ears newbie that's just picked up LVA, uh, just about to go through the course or has gone through the course and they're about to go out, start contacting people, doing outreach, whether through email, through going to a, a, a business meetup in person, what advice would you give to that person who's just starting their journey? Um, yeah, so I mean, th- we just mentioned it. You know, step out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, think about all the different strategies that you could use to, um, you know, write them down. You know, what? How could I get a new client? Oh, I could call. Uh, I could email. Um, I could go door to door. I could go to business meetings. I could give seminars. Um, and then go down the list and say, oh, well, you know, I could do that. I could do that. Oh, that just makes me really uncomfortable. Uh, and find the one that makes you the most uncomfortable and do that first. <laughs> um, so that's, that's going to be, you know, you're, you're probably your best bet because if you can get comfortable with doing the things or the tasks that make you the most uncomfortable, then all the rest of them are just going to be super easy for you. You're going to get to that point. Um, but I would say, you know, I think that we all, it's easier said than done, right? I mean, you're, 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 you're going to listen to this and you're going to say, okay, I can do that. But when it all comes down to it, um, you know, there are going to be moments where you're just going to be like, oh, I don't want to. And, uh, but I would say just, you know, keep pushing through those moments 
Uh, and the more and more that you do that, the more you, I would say you need to gain motivate or, or momentum. Um, and from that momentum, you're, you're going to gain more and more confidence. And, um, you know, it's just making those, you know, set up small little goals, you know, I, and this is what I did too, is, um, you know, in January, 2013, when I wrote down, I'm going to start my own business, um, within the, this year, I'm going to leave Avid, I'm going to leave my six figure job and I'm going to start my own business. Uh, and that was my big scary goal. And I laughed at it. Uh, but basically what I did is I, I broke it down, like write your goal down. I mean, this is really, I don't know if we can get into personal development, but you know, write your goal down, uh, and then list out all the little minute baby steps that is going to take for you to get there. What do you need to learn? What do you need to do? Uh, and break it down as much as possible so that you can get it in bite sized chunks. Because, you know, if sometimes you're, we're looking at this big thing like, oh, all right, so I, I bought LVA. Now I need to go and I need to start a business and I need to make $30,000 a month. Don't think like that. You know, think like, all right, so this is what I need to go through the modules. I need to get somewhat comfortable. You're not going to be, you're never going to be 100% comfortable uh, when you first start. Uh, you can watch the course 10,000 times, but until you actually go and actually do it, um, there's always going to be a little bit of uncomfortable. I don't even know how you say that. Uncomfort. Uncomfortability. Is that a word? It is I don't now. Know. We'll just use it. Well, we're gonna we're gonna coin that phrase. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would just say, you know, it's you know, write down baby steps. Um, because the more and more, and this is exactly what I did, is I I, I started waking up earlier. Um, and I would just I, I would write down five things um, that I needed to get done that day, and there were baby things like um, you know, watch this video. Um, so they weren't like these huge goals that it was like, you know, I, that I, I you know, write down five things that you absolutely can do uh, within that day and that you must do that's going to inch you closer and closer. Um, and just be patient. Um, easier said than done when you have no money in the bank, right? So if you're in a situation like I was and you're, this is like, this is it, um, that's one thing. But, you know, try to be patient and just, you know, scratch those baby steps off one by one. And the more and more you do that, and the more and more you step out of your comfort zone, the easier and easier it is, um, it's going to be to kind of, to get to where you're going. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice is just, you know, be patient, um, you know, write down your goals uh, and break them down and just step out of your comfort zone whenever possible, because you know, if you're doing that, you're, you're growing. So is that good enough? <laughs> Great advice. Great advice. Well, with that said, Phil, thanks for taking the time to uh, jump on this interview, share your insights uh, that you've had going through the course with us. Uh, it's been great. And uh, I'll see you uh, in the near future, no doubt. Awesome. I appreciate you, man. Have a good day.